Hello again, Toshihiro. I'd like to first apologize for the delay in returning these. We have a rather complicated inbox system, <laughs> and it seems that your essays were mistaken for um, corrections already completed. As far as your question goes, when trying to come up with ideas for essays, I suppose the only thing that really benefits you is practice. So what I'll do is when I send this correction back to you, I'll also include a small exercise that asks you to produce um, essentially 16 ideas for paragraphs from um, short prompts, little questions. And because it's uh, an exercise in which you have to produce 16 ideas, by the end of it, your brain tends to be just a little bit faster at it. But first of all, let's correct this one. So I can already see that this one is great. Um, it's looking very, very well structured indeed. So, it is argued that education should be more entertaining, while others believe that schools are only to educate students. Great. Tiny bit of repetition there. Um, uh, maybe solely for academic purposes, or should be strictly academic, something like that. This essay agrees that schools ought to be more pleasing, I would say engaging. Although we're talking about enjoyable activities, simply pleasing the kids would be ineffective in a learning context. But engaging them, getting them to, to take part, to participate, would be far more effective. And will demonstrate points and support arguments using examples from, remove this, and I would say from materials produced by the Australian Department of Education. A bit more specific, rather than saying they are materials by the Australian Department, you could say materials produced by. Firstly, activities are commonly used in the classroom to promote imagination and creativity. This appears to play a crucial role for better understanding and faster learning for students. I would say in. I'd say maybe the, a crucial role in the rate of learning. Because when there's a, a point in academic writing, or a point in writing generally, um, that if we're speaking about the rate of something, so the rate of acceleration, the rate of learning, we cannot refer to it as fast or faster, really, because fast result, um, refers to speed or velocity. So we have to, because this is a rate of learning, the students learn at, you know, x amount per second or x amount per minute, so it's certainly a rate of acceleration essentially, well a rate. So we would say, understanding is fine, but I would use comprehension. And here I would say a faster, re a faster learning rate or a greater learning rate for students. A study by the Australian Department of Education revealed that the pupils who received uh, more engaging classes or classes intended to be fun outweighed those who had passive education by 10% in the final exams. I would say outperformed. Outweighed is, is literally for weighing something up. So in this decision between these two things, this what the benefits of this one clearly outweigh the benefits of this one. Um, but if we're talking about performance, then we need to say outperformed. Outweigh refers to a judgment made on the thing. Outperformed refers to what it itself did. Therefore, entertaining education styles should be encouraged. I would use as. As is a nicer way to say because. You can even you can even start it with this explanation. So, as more entertaining education styles provide students with increased imagination and creativity, as well as a detailed, uh, as well as more detailed understanding, and a faster rate of learning. Oh, I'm still not sure how to phrase that one. Wait one sec. We could say a, a more in depth learning experience. 
because if you're just reading books or texts, um, you're only getting what you're getting from that specific text. But if you're doing a fun and engaging experience and you're learning from the whole experience, then you could say it's a more in-depth uh, coverage, that you're getting more out of it. It's more detailed. The information's denser. Secondly, students have the propensity to concentrate and pay more attention, no plural, attention, to the teacher when the class is more fulfilling. Correct. This may be because adolescents are likely to lose focus um, during during unsatisfying circumstances. But I would say likely to lose focus when enduring dissatisfying circumstances. When enduring dissatisfying circumstances. For instance, an article published by the Australian Department of Education found that primary school teachers had improved classroom experiences when classes with activities were implemented. Uh, that's great, but by what degree and by what measurement? How had the classroom experience improved? How can you say that is true? So we, it's, it's great to use an example to say, my point works, but we have to provide the evidence for it. So if the primary school teachers improved the classroom experience, how was it measured? By what degree was it improved? Etc. Thus, entertaining classes can also increase the satisfaction of teachers, no plural, because they receive uh, better attention and participation from the students. Uh, here I would say, Um, given that teachers receive increased attention and participation in entertaining class situations or entertaining classroom environments, um, teachers can also benefit. To conclude, education with fun activities can provide students, no, the, can provide students with improved learning experiences, and a more detailed understanding. Just leave this one out for now. Improved learning experiences and a more detailed understanding of their subject area, maybe. It is also beneficial for teachers because they are likely to receive uh, increased participation and attention, no plural again, from students, no the. It is predicted that entertaining education, entertaining educational practices, maybe. Entertaining educational practices will be implemented in various school settings in the near future, possibly. So Google Documents has once again split your task one in two, so I'll read it in two parts. Uh, let's have a go. So the line chart provides data of the total incomes of special trade zone members from 1990 to 2000, while the par chart indicates the market share of exports worldwide in 2000. Is it from the same countries? Special trade zone numbers, um, we get it. I know what they are. Um, market share of exports. Is it exports from these countries or to these countries? Are we talking about stuff coming out of the special trade zone members' countries or going into? Because um, we, we don't know with this sentence. So in 2000, where are these exports coming from or where are they going to? It is clear from the line graph that the income that income from uh, whose income let's stay specific whose income showed a consistent rise or a constant rise until 1997 and then remained almost unchanged for the next three years in the pie chart Ben's and James Island were the major export shareholders while Joe and Peterland were the, were the lowest two I would say were, were the two biggest exporters of goods. The two, or the two greatest exporters, the two biggest, the two biggest exporters of goods, or the two greatest exporters of goods. We just want to refer to the fact that those two were the top, specifically. And then the least, or the least performing, or were the smallest exporters. To begin with, the total income began at over 120,000 watt. We need the uh, units. Is it US dollars, Australian dollars, bottle caps? We need to know 120,000 watt. In 1990, 
and increased moderately to 135,000 in 1993. After this, there was a sharp rise to over 170,000 in 1997, reaching its peak. And the number remained almost the same for the following years. I would say something here like, uh, the number experienced a plateau with only minor fluctuations for the following three years. A plateau with minor fluctuations. So we can always if we if we have one description that works properly primarily and we need to add detail to it we can give the primary description first so primarily it's a fluctuation but there are some ups and downs sorry primarily it's a plateau but given that there are some ups and downs in it we can say that it's a plateau with small fluctuations throughout Turning to the pie chart, Benzlin and Jensland experienced the highest international market share at 90,000 blah blah blah, respectively. Market share of what? Of exports? Let's uh, be specific. What are they sharing the market of? What's the market? What is the product? Joland and Peterland have the lowest market share at only and respectively. While Timsland, Herbertland and Fredland uh, demonstrated or achieved achieved um, a market share of well over Timsland, Herbertland and Fredland all achieved a market share of well over 50,000 something in 2000. So I think creating slightly more complex sentences in these task ones would do you good. Try to describe the curve in a little more detail and explain every data point in the reference. So if it is, if you're talking about the market share, make sure we know which market it is and which product it is. And certainly whether it's a proportion, a percentage or a, a measurement in dollars or a measurement in um, anything really. We just need to know the units. So with this correction, I will also send you that exercise for... Um, extracting ideas because you're right if you're taking more than five or ten minutes to come up with an idea for an essay you're likely to run out of time before you've finished writing it or not be able to proofread it or something like that which is very important so I'll send you the 16 P1s P2s shortly uh, if you can send those back with the next essays or before you do the next essays that would be most helpful for you but until then pal have a wonderful day I'll speak to you very soon